Greetings, everyone. This is Eric Stewart from Fishing Fanatics, and today I am joined with Will Davis. And Will Davis, who is a Bassmaster Elite Series angler, he's a rookie this year, and he earned a spot from fishing the Bass Nation competition, ended up winning that. So, how you doing, Will? I'm doing good, Eric. How are you? I'm doing good, man. It's great to have you here. And the first question I always like asking on these podcasts to find out how people get in the bass fishing. So, Will, how'd you get in the bass fishing, kind of growing up? Uh, most of the time people get into bass fishing through a friend or a family member um, that takes the time out of their hectic day and takes you fishing. And uh, in my case, that was my dad. So he took me when I was a little little young boy and uh, just fell in love with it. So Nice, man. Yeah, but it all starts, it all starts with, the old, or with somebody taking you fishing. For sure. Yep, absolutely. So when you're growing up there, did you and your dad fish tournaments, or was it just more fun fishing, throwing a worm out there, bob or that kind of stuff, or what? How did that kind of develop into tournament fishing? So, from about age two to three, and then from you know three to probably six or so, that was you know just fun fishing, and even on we still fun fish today, but we started fishing tournaments when I was around seven or eight years old and started doing little Tuesday nighters down here on Lay Lake and after that um, just progressed and started fishing a lot of team tournaments and um, fish federation and here we are now. So did you ever fish a tournament with your dad in like a team tournament growing up or? Oh yes sir yeah a bunch of them a bunch of them we probably fish at least 20 to 25 a year. Oh, did you ever win one with your dad? Yes, sir. Yeah, we won a bunch. Very, very blessed. Love that, man. Love that. What, what's the coolest time? Like, what was one that you guys won that was like, oh, that was a pretty cool experience? You got any stories? Uh, yeah, probably the coolest one that we ever won is um, as a local tournament down here. Um, it's called um, the Sulacock Marine uh, Big Bass Buddy Trail. There's a bunch of hammers in that thing, and but it took us about 15 years before we finally won a championship, which is a two-day. So we won that three years ago, and that was pretty special. Damn, that's that sounds like a uh, quite the competition down there. You got it's funny when you take a look at like the elite series, the opens, and all these different tournaments. But then a lot of the, your local tournaments, you got people that like master those lakes, and just like guys who only fish that lake. So it's it's cool to see that you and your dad kind of ended up winning a couple down there. But let's talk about your rise to the elites because I think it's interesting diving into your background here. In 2017, you fished the uh, the Opens in the southern uh, the southern region down there. And then in 2022, um, on the Bass Nation competition, you ended up winning that and qualifying for the elites this year. So tell me a little bit about that whole experience of actually qualifying for the elites. So in 2017, I tried to to make it, and you know, it just wasn't meant to be. It's all in God's timing, and it was not meant to be that year. And I financially wasn't ready. This it takes a lot of money to do this sport. And with that being said, in 2000, I finally you know got a good job, all that good stuff, and finally really pursued it in 2021. And fished a local qualifier here on Lay Lake. Ended up, uh, I didn't win that one. I just qualified for the state championship. It was held on Lake Martin in Alabama. Ended up winning that, and that qualified me to the regional championship, which was on Smith Lake. And after I won that one, I qualified for the national championship, which was held on Pickwick last year, and I was fortunate enough to win that one as well. So that's one heck of a road. I mean, how many tournaments is that for that I count? Uh, yeah, it's five, it's five total. Whew. Oh, man. So is, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's kind of two ways to go about it. The way you went and then the open route where you can kind of qualify for, like, points and then get into the elites, right? Absolutely, yeah. I would, you know, any way getting in there in the elites or the Bassmaster Classic is hard. I don't care which route you go through. Um, I think for a working man, the Federation is definitely the way to go. It might be a little tougher, but that's really the only way that you could do it, especially the way the format is now. In the Opens, they have nine tournaments. So they combine all the um, divisions and put them into one. Or Let me rephrase that. There's still three divisions, but to qualify for the Elite Series, you have to fish all three of them divisions. 
and then I think they take the top. Uh, I can't remember somewhere in the ten, nine or ten of the guys from the lead or from the opens to qualify for the leads. Yeah, and then and if you win one, you get to go to the Bassmaster Classic. So that's in the opens and the federations uh, all around the United States to. To make it to the national championship is hard enough, but once you get there, you have to finish um, in the top three to make the Bassmaster Classic. You have to ultimately win the tournament to make the league series. Damn. Damn. So, yeah, you know, I've talked to a lot of guys about this, like, new open format, and it is kind of – it seems like it would be tough for the working man, right, a little bit. Um, how, how was your kind of take on that, like, the whole open, the new format? Um, you know, it's very tough for a working man, but, you know, I had mixed emotions on it when I first uh, heard about the new schedule, but the more that I fish now, being at the level that I'm at, it's, it's very nice for them guys. They need to take that and use it as their advantage because if they don't fish them nine or they're, they're playing by fishing them nines, you make it to late series that's what you're gonna be doing yeah you're fishing nine so, yeah um, so with that being said it's challenging all the way up so if you really want to pursue this sport you gotta be all in even at even at the open level to get to late series business owners and marketing professionals in the philly area bad rhino takes the overwhelm out of digital marketing with tailored digital marketing services, from social media management to SEO and PPC advertising, our expert team navigates the complexities of the digital ad space for your business. Let Bad Rhino lead you to success. Visit badrhinoinc.com and let's take your business to new heights. Bad Rhino, we do digital marketing so you don't have to. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you fished the classic this year. And it's something that I took a look at this year and in the years past about the classic and it's been such a cool like tournament down there. The um what was your experience down there and was it kind of cool being able to fish it um for the first time? You know, when I was a kid I'd even I'd dream of the classic. My dad would take me all over the United States to different classics and I'd work the, the booth that we had with Davis Bait Company and selling product all day and then my favorite part was going to Bassmaster Classic Play in. Well, I always told my dad after I went to the first one, I told him, I said, I'm going to make one of these one day, I hope. And uh, I've had dreams about them opening up the curtain and, you know, I'd go through there and or right when they opened up the curtain, they'd call my name, I'd wake up every time or quit dreaming about it. So finally getting to fulfill that dream in real life, it was pretty special. It's probably the most special thing I've ever done, for sure. Wow, that's that's awesome down there and you came in 40th if i remember looking at the stat sheet there too um overall through the tournament is it kind of like what did you kind of expect did you expect to kind of come out and win or was it just like were you just kind of happy to be there what was kind of like the feel from it uh there was one one part of me that i was happy to be there of course and then once you get there there's that part of you that you want to win that's just a competitor yeah and you so with that being said, uh, it was probably one of my toughest tournaments I've ever fished in my life. It was a very challenging lake. So it's- Definitely. No, it's, it totally makes sense. It's like you kind of get caught up in the limelight, and then you get there, and it's like, all right, it's game time. Let's go fish. Let's go all win right. a thing. So for sure. Right. Well, let's talk about the Elite Series now um, this year on 2023. Whataburger Bassmaster Elite on Lay Lake. You ended up winning that. I was following along, too, on your Facebook when you were doing the live feeds and live updates on there, which are awesome, by the way. For anyone who's listening, definitely check out uh, Will Davis's Facebook page to check out those live updates when he's going through um, the tournaments and kind of giving you an update on there. But tell me about Lay Lake. Um, what ended up through the final day you were in seventh place? What ended up you kind of taking home that trophy there? You know, after the first day... Uh, I was in seventh, and then I, I think I climbed up to second, and then I climbed, or then I fell back down to third. Brandon was catching these fish in a creek right there was where we was taking off, and I fished in there my whole life. And then fish just don't replenish that way for a lot of people, and for or the, they 
they replenish, it's just a funnel ground for them. They swim back there, it's cooler water, they swim out. A lot of fish getting released there all through the year. It's 99% of the tournaments go out of there. So with that being said, it just shows you how good Brandon Polnick is as a fisherman. To go back there and do what he done for four days, that's just it's unheard of. And with that being said, I knew that I had to catch him because I thought his fish would, would falter, and they didn't, especially after that third day. And Christy caught the nine-something. I was like, I definitely got to go out tomorrow and really crack them if I'm going to have a chance just to win it. So it was very uh, mind-boggling week as far as keeping the motions under control and making the right decisions, not getting to sleep much, how everybody, you know, calling you doing interviews and all that stuff so you have to got to set that on one side of the brain and focus on the other side of the brain so it's a very challenging week but i'd go back in a heartbeat if i could relive it how difficult is it from day to day to like they weigh fish you're like all right i'm in seventh and then the next day you're in second to not get ahead of yourself um throughout a tournament like that because it's i could see it's so easy to be like kind of get caught up in the moment and you don't really get to take a step back and be like, okay, and really focus on what you have to do that last day to win it. Like, how do you kind of keep yourself kind of on that path? You have to, you have to just stay mentally focused each day. Every day is going to be different. You have to, uh, you got to pace yourself, you know, for four days, knowing these places down on that river, what time of day that they get there by the mouth current gets there you have to play it to the teeth have everything go your way to to win one of these tournaments and that's that's any late we go to because the bass master league series they them guys bring it every day yeah they definitely you guys definitely catch them in that elite series for sure so being in the elite series this is your first year here what's what's the difference between fishing the opens or other tournaments that you fish to the elite series is it the competition is it kind of like you know that tv spot what what do you think the biggest difference is the biggest difference is probably the hype of it man because it lives up to that when you look over and you see jason christie over there and you see uh all all the guys that you've looked at your whole life and you finally mike Iaconelli, brandon polnick Gerald Swindle, you know, the list goes on and on. And you finally get to sit there and look at them while you're sitting behind your console and Dave Mercer's about to call your number out. It really, really hits. So it's a big difference. It's a lot more uh, emotional, I guess, or more jitters at, at that stage. But it's like we talked about earlier, as soon as you get to your first spot, man, it's, it's all, uh, you put all that stuff behind you. Yeah, it's, after you make that cast, it's just it's all a blur after that. It's about catching the, the next fish or getting the first bite. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it is still fishing, right? That's right. That's right. So what's like your go-to tackle or tactic down there in Alabama fishing? Is it um are you are you normally offshore fishermen, bank fishermen, or kind of what do you kind of focus on? I focus on it, both of them mm-hmm. because down here you have to be diverse to catch them. These fish down here are so pressured. You have to play the time of the day and the current or the brush piles, whatever lake you're on. So down here, I always start out most of the time early, or shallow real early, and then I can go deep it later. Gotcha. So that's my one-two punch. Gotcha. And then when you're fishing deeper, how much are you using electronics to kind of figure out where you're at, um, whether it be side scan, forward-facing sonar, and all that good stuff? Since I've got the... Uh, Hummingbird 360, um, it's really changed the game for me. It's a must for fishing brush piles. It's a must. Or rock piles. You know, they really helped me win at Lake Lake, getting to see the key boulders that I had out there. And help me make that accurate cash. In a regular tournament, back in the day, I would pull up there and make two or three, you know, four or five casts, never bump it. I'd move on and be like, well, I just didn't get the right line upon it or whatever. Well, it saved me a lot of time by having that 360 up there. A lot of time. You know, it's it's something we, we've never really hit on the podcast here. So ex- explain a little bit <laughs> what the 360 is because I've looked into them. I don't currently have one installed in my boat, and I know about a little bit about them. But just explain kind of what um, what that's all about, the Hummingbird 360, 360. So, so the 360, it shoots flat 
on the bottom. So it shows instead of like, it shows you the length or the whole bottom as you would be side scanning, but it shows it in a circular motion and it goes through there. And just every time you move the control motor, it's, it's, con it's constantly moving clockwise. Like this right here, you have rings in there. So that, that judges your uh, judges your distance from each ring. So it helps you see rocks more visible than you would be if you're sitting on top of them. Say like a regular 2D or uh, or 3D imaging or whatever you want to call it. So it's very crucial to to see. You'll see two big rocks right here and one rock way over there by itself, and you you can see which angle you need to throw, especially if you're on spot lock. Yeah. So it's definitely game changing. Absolutely. So let me just kind of paint this picture for anyone like listening to and kind of for myself as well. Um, you're dropped on a brand new lake. You've never fished that body of water, right? It's practice day one. What's the first thing you're doing? Are you kind of trolling around with side imaging and using that 360 kind of find spots? Is that kind of like the game plan or is it something completely different? So when I first get to a lake, most time I'm going to fish first four or five hours. I mean, because you drove for 10 or 15, so I'm going to fish at least two to three hours just to get my bearings back on and maybe catch a couple of fish. But then after that, it's all business. <clears throat> you sit behind the steering wheel, and then that's, that's where I use, I use a three-pitcher uh, pallet. I use, and a lot of guys use two to three drafts on their dash, two up front or Twenty on up front, whatever whatever fits your deal. I just run two on the front and I run two on the back. Hummingbirds. So on the back, I, I use a Helix Twelve and I got a three page or a three pallet deal on one page. So I got one that runs parallel up like this. It shows my map, and then stacked on top of each other, I have my down engine and my side ski. So that's what I use, and I use, you know, I'm looking for any type of, well, with that being said, Eric, it really just depends on what time of the year. Say, like, this time of year, I'm looking for creek channels, secondary creek channels, uh, where they make a swing. I try to find something early for an early morning bite, whether it be, like, grass line, uh, old, old piers that's got pier lights on it that run all night. Yeah. Stuff like that where I can hit first thing, but then after that, I'm going to go find everything out deep that I found on that um, hummingbird. And I mostly look for brush piles and channel swings or humps or anything like that this time of year. Gotcha. Now, that's that's some great information because I think it's a, it's a point where, like, whether someone's fun fishing or someone's tournament fishing, it's kind of you get put in this new spot when you're traveling with family or if it's for a tournament. You don't really know where to start. So I think that's pretty good to just lay it all out there and just be like what you look for <laughs> certain times of the year. So I appreciate that. I'm sure our listeners listeners will appreciate that for sure. And um, we'll, I'll let you go here because we're actually recording this a little bit later at night. I'll, um, I'll ask you what your PB largemouth and PB smallmouth is. My PB largemouth was 10-11. I caught it at the Harris Chain practicing for a college tournament back in 2011. Um, and then my personal smallmouth was a 6.3 on Pickwick a couple of years ago. Me and my dad was up there with one of our buddies just fishing. It was in, in the springtime. So. Nice. I love it. Awesome, Will. I appreciate it. Where can I'll give you the red carpet here. Shout out any of your social media channels, especially your Facebook page, because I love the content you're putting out there too. Um, just let the listeners know where they can kind of follow along with your uh, story. You can go find me on Will Davis Jr. Fishing. Uh, on Facebook and Instagram is Will Davis Jr. Fishing underscore. And then also have a YouTube channel, uh, Will Davis Jr. Fishing. So go check them out that, or go check them out. I'd sure appreciate that. Absolutely. Thanks, Will. I'll uh, link them on the description for people to go check you out. And um, I appreciate you doing this with me. And then good luck on the future Elite Series events. I appreciate it, Eric.